Hey everybody, my name is Charles and it is time to fulfill a request that I have been getting constantly from you guys and that is to talk about the music from Hey Arnold. <laughs> Move it, football head! Hey, Arnold! Woo! Wow, okay. So it sounds like we start... Or whatever the line is. We're starting in E-flat. We just kind of sit there. It's like this kind of bluesy, bluesy sort of sound. So we sit there for a while, and then eventually we go... To the four chord. And at first glance, I'm like, okay, well, is this a blues? But no, it's not, because... I think that's what I'm hearing, and that's super fun. We're sitting there, and we have this kind of E-flat sound, and then... We go to this, the four chord, dominant. That's really nice, because we have this... Three, six, two, five... One. In a blues context, we can take a lot of those chords and flip them into their dominant forms, which, by the way, just so you know, check this out. So we have, we know we are like two, five, one. Everybody's familiar with that. We can go back around the circle two more steps and we get three, six, two, five, one. Right? Very, very common usage. We see it all the time. When we're playing more of a blues sound, here's the trick with a lot of these chords. We can turn them into what we might call subdominants or secondary dominants. Let's take the key of E flat major, the scale. If we're to use the notes in the scale and create triads based on every step, every degree of the scale, they go like this. They're a series of major and minor triads, with the exception of the seventh, which is diminished. And that's just using the notes of the scale in what you might consider to be a diatonic fashion, using just the naturally occurring. Let's take the second, the third, the sixth, and look at what they are when they're naturally occurring in the scale. Major, here's the second, it's minor. The third is minor, the fourth is major, the fifth is major, the sixth is minor, right? So minor, minor, minor. Two, three, and six are minor in the naturally occurring forms of the major scale. So what happens when we turn those minors into majors is we create what we call subdominants or secondary dominants. They're not the naturally occurring dominant chords within the context of the major sound. So that's what we're using here. When we go to that four chord, Originally, that is major. We're just adding flat seven, right? But then, let's go to the third. We make that a subdominant. We make the sixth a subdominant as well, because normally that would be minor. Now we can make the second also a secondary dominant, because this would normally be a minor chord. We're making it a major chord, turning it into a dominant. And then the five chord is almost always a dominant. Right? And so we can utilize these really kind of cool ways just to create a bit of a different sound in a totally normal chord progression. Really nice. What is that? Let's see. I want to say the root is a B. I'm suspicious that there's like a dominant in there. So I want to point out something really cool about this chord, which is that the call out Arnold is on pitch. So if it is this chord, which it may not be. Listen to that. But it's like so done in a way where you don't think it's singing. That's really cool. <laughs> Almost like we're... Right? We're using kind of this chromatic... 
thing. But then, hey Arnold. on Hey Arnold, those three chords. So we're just using dominance. Hey Land on the one. That's super cool, really funky. It's great. <laughs> oh my god! Wait, really? Oh, oh, oh wow! Where the bass comes in. Yikes! <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> I was confused at first because the way I kind of heard it starting, I think where the drums start, that is right on one. Check it out. Where the five comes in, that five chord right there, the way the piano plays it, now that makes more sense. And then going back to the one, I think we're right about that. I think one at the beginning is where the drums come right in. What a groove, oh my God. So short, so killing, oh my God. I had no idea. So Jim Lang wrote this music. He was quoted as saying, I never ever got a note from the executives about the music in the show. And in fact, on certain occasions, he said, I would try to make them say, ouch. I'd think, okay, this is a chase scene or something like that. So I'm gonna try to pretend I'm the art ensemble of Chicago and just see if the, he, he can get him to say, you can't do that on TV. And they never said anything. So he was able to get away with doing all kinds of different styles and trying all kinds of things. You know, and I think Jim Lang put it absolutely perfectly. And he said, I think, people tend to assume that children can't deal with complexity. I think it's a curse of making entertainment for kids, animated entertainment especially. Kids actually really do love the things that they're challenged by. And this music is exactly that. I mean, this this is not like, oh, simple kid music stuff. And a lot of things that are made for kids are, are just so dumbed down. Johnny Costa and Mr. Rogers together, they were very adamant that children should be challenged. And Jim Lang is echoing the same exact thoughts here. And the soundtrack is truly music that kids can listen to as part of the, you know, the delivery of the cartoon, it's there and your ears are being molded by it. And that's the exposure that can really cause your ear to say, oh yeah, 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 no, that sound. I want more of that sound. And before you know it, you're challenging yourself listening to more and more complex music. And it just opens up the whole world of being able to enjoy a huge range of things. This is absolutely fantastic. What's this one? Stomp it. This is the end credits. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah! This is not holding anything back. These are harmonically complex ideas. The arrangement, the way the horns interact with the bass lines and the chord, like this stuff is complex. This Just listen to the keyboard inside of that little intro. That is super cool, check that out. We have this D minor sound. Whoa! That is super cool. Rather than going, but instead, woo, we use this A flat triad over the D, which is the tritone away, right? And then I think this is just sort of like a quartal voicing here, to a fourth stacked on top of each other. Now, but what's cool about that, we're just taking this locked, this locked position and moving it around. So this is like a uh, second inversion triad. F, right? Then G, A 
flat, right? We're just moving that locked second inversion triad around. And then until we get to here. The melody is so non-diatonic. There's so many chromatic inclusions, so many things that are like, just kind of odd harmony. Chromatic. Whoa! I mean, great rhythm. It's just so like wide open and just leaves so many opportunities for harmonic exploration. This has no business being this good from a 90s cartoon, but yet here we are with just this incredible music for a kid's cartoon. Absolutely brilliant. I'm so excited by the things that are unapologetically challenging. These things can easily serve as gateway drugs into extremely complex and sophisticated and satisfying genres of music, whether it's jazz or anything else. Just like getting into things that are so different. It's so refreshing to learn about these incredibly unexpectedly complex things. Jim Lang, hats off. Like this is just incredible. And like I said, I know this is insane to you guys, but truly I, I never, I never saw Hey Arnold, what a joy to check out now and see what you guys were all checking out when you were kids. I mean, wow. No wonder you guys give such great recommendations. As with recommendations, as always, let me know in the comments below what else should I be checking out. And if you do feel like supporting the channel, I would love for you to check out the link in the description to the Cornell Music Academy. We have multiple courses up there right now. We have an intro to piano. We have intro to improvisation. We, have any, we even have a course called Making Sense of Modes where we talk about a lot more of this complex harmonic stuff and you can get into like, what are modes and how do I actually use them in real life. Not just like, oh, remember, modes are the degree of the scale and blah, blah, blah. Like, no, how do we use these things? Again, with an intro to piano course, if you've never played piano before and you're interested in playing piano, this will get you from zero to having a tool set that you can use and start to learn how to play anything you want to play. If you want to take that one step further and begin to play anything you want to play on the spot, our intro to improvisation course will help you do exactly that. All of my courses are completely jam-packed full of exercises and actionable steps, PDF downloads, resources, backing tracks, you name it, it's all in there, along with tons of super clear graphic animations that you can follow along with. It makes things easy to follow. If, you, if it's ever been overwhelming to you to learn how to play piano, you just never felt like you had the right way to start or didn't want to drop the money on in-person lessons, etc. This is a fantastic place for you to start. And with improvising, I mean, if you've always felt like it's just too difficult or you've been afraid to start because we have this blockade where we don't want to sound bad, well, we're going to fix that problem because we're going to get you playing right now. We're going to get you playing very, very early on in the course, and then we'll break it down and start figuring out, okay, now how do we get better? Everything that you need to start working on improvisation or to start learning the piano from scratch, it's all available on the Cornell Music Academy. And once you're a member, you get access to the secret Discord channels where you'll get to connect with other students, connect with me a little bit, and that's where you're gonna find out about even bigger, massive discounts on future products once you're already a member. So check out the link in the description, check out the Cornell Music Academy. It's absolutely the best way that you can support the channel. So many of you have so far, and I'm really, really appreciative to all of you. And whether you do or don't, I'm so thankful for you for checking out this video. So thank you. Thank you for your recommendations as always. Let me know more recommendations in the comments below and we will see you in the next video.